What's going on guys? I am the Walrus Jedi, and as you've seen in the intro, welcome to another episode of Star Wars Alien Species. And today's episode is the Nogri. So if you like these species videos, then please consider liking and subscribing and hitting the notification bell for more of them in the future. And uh, without further ado, let's get to the planet of the Nogri. Honagur. Though the Nogri are widely feared as among the galaxy's most efficient killers, their homeworld of Honagur has become a symbol of hope as its inhabitants fight their way back from the brink of ecological extinction. Honagur once crawled with life, and the short, wiry Nogri emerged as an apex predator, organizing into, ma organizing into matriarchal clans. The Nogri honed their unarmed combat skills until they could take down animals five times their size. Circa 30,000 BBY, or before the Battle of Yavin. Honagur attracted the attention of the Rakatan Infinite Empire, but few traces remain of what was likely a short occupation. By the time of the Clone Wars, the Nogri lived in hundreds of clan settlements, including the Grand Clan governing city, Nystau spread across the northern face of Honegger's single globe-spanning continent. In 20 BBY, the separatist research vessel Gehenna lost a battle with a Republic cruiser, crashing into Honegger's forests and spilling its tanks of Trihexalon, a runaway defoliant developed as a bioweapon. Jedi Knight Ayla Secura led the effort to retrieve the Trihexalon, Data, but no one from the Republic stayed behind to help the Nogri survive the coming calamity. Within weeks, the planet had been irreparably poisoned. Within months, the Nogri began dropping from starvation. Into this catastrophe came Darth Vader, newly fitted with the black cybernetic suit that made him a figure of awe to the desperate Nogri. In exchange for their service as Imperial assassins, Vader promised to save the Nogri by restoring Honegger. The offer proved empty. Rather than purify Honegger's soil, the Imperial decontamination droids ensured that the Nogri clean lands remained perpetually on the edge of famine. The Nogri continued to serve Grand Admiral Thrawn after Vader's death until they discovered the Empire's ruse in 9 ABY. Nogri agents assassinated Thrawn, then moved to secure their own destiny. Some continued to honor their people's vow to Vader by serving his daughter Leia Organa Solo as bodyguards, while the remainder began the hard job of restoring Honegger's soil hectare by hectare. Desert plain in terms of terrain. It is 10,440 kilometers in diameter. It is 23 standard hours per day, and it has 208 standard days for its year. It is a population of about 10 million. The species is obviously the Nagri. It's 100% Nagri on Honegger. The language is Honegrin, and the government is a clan. Major exports are bodyguards and assassins, imports, foodstuffs, water, technology, and medicine. Nagri. Nagri are hairless, gray-skinned bipeds native to the mostly barren and isolated outer rim planet of Honegger. They are strong and sinewy creatures, with extraordinarily quick reflexes and inherent agility. They are not tall, but their smaller size often belies their ruthlessness and deadly skills. These people are compact killing machines, built to hunt and destroy. They are predators who sport long talons, teeth-filled jaws, large, quick-moving, deep-set black eyes, and an extremely keen sense of smell. This sense of smell is so refined, so powerful, that an augury can identify beings' bloodlines by their scent. In addition, given their size, speed, and agility, they are, they are particularly stealthy, able to sneak up on many targets unawares. Nagri prefer to use primitive tools and weapons, killing opponents up close. Along with their superior fighting skills, this trait makes them especially deadly assassins. Nagri society is matriarchal and clan-oriented. Families often cluster together, creating singular villages. Each clan has a matriarch, or clan leader, usually one of the oldest and wisest female clan members, 
who makes the ultimate decision on all clan affairs as dictated by a tradition stretching back countless generations. Each clan has a dukkha, or community building, within which all major events are held. All village life revolves around this one central meeting place. Historically, inter-clan rivalries were often brutal and bloody. But over time, these interseen conflicts took their toll, and having learned that they would drive themselves to extinction, the clans understood that they must settle their differences and coexist. By the time of the Clone Wars, the Nagri were living in peace, ignorant of the galaxy at large. As a people, the Nagri are brutal, committed fighters who find honor in serving their charge as well. Honor is paramount to Nagri culture and and serving poorly brings disgrace upon their clans. The safety of those they assume responsibility for is utmost importance. They are also smart, honest, flexible, and take great care to learn and understand the rituals and cultural traditions of others. Nagri speak basic in addition to their own language, albeit in gravelly, chilling voices. They are not a fun-loving or sociable people, and in fact have very little in the way of a sense of humor. Honegar was originally a lush planet, teeming with a wide variety of animals and plant life, with a yearly rotation that is only half a standard year. Now it is a barren world barely capable of supporting its inhabitants. Honegar's environmental problems began with a space battle about 20 years before the Battle of Yavin, a clash between a Republic cruiser and a Separatist science vessel carrying a poisonous defoliant. Unfortunately, the Separatist ship crashed into Honegar's surface, spilling its toxic chemicals and resulting in an ecological disaster. This incident poisoned Honegar's soil and atmosphere, destroying much of the plant's life. Shortly after the end of the Clone Wars, the Sith Lord, Darth Vader, came to Honegar, prepared to make servants of the Nagri. Vader convinced the Nagri that the Republic was to blame for the damage to their planet, and that only he and the Empire could repair their environment. In return, seeing that they were gifted, effective warriors, he requested they serve him personally as assassins and bodyguards. The Nagri, who were at the time of Vader's intervention an agrarian people and facing famine, felt they had no choice but to agree to Lord Vader's solution. Bound by their word of honor as given to the Empire, they served Vader and later Admiral Thrawn, who enlisted the Nagri to be his servants when he announced to them that he was Vader's successor. It was not long after, as the New Republic was struggling to combat Grand Admiral Thrawn's brilliant battle plans, that Thrawn ordered the Nagri to kidnap Princess Leia Organa Solo, who at the time was pregnant with twins, Jaina and Jason. The Nagri tracked Leia to Kashyyyk, where she was under the protection of the Wookiees. Because of her scent, they recognized her immediately as the Mal Arayash, or daughter of Vader. After stopping the Nogri team and turning them to her side, Leia traveled to Honegar and asked the Nogri to work with her in overthrowing Thrawn. Leia was initially refused by the clan leaders because of their word of honor to Thrawn, but the Nogri finally agreed to betray the Chiss Admiral when Leia showed them that the help the Empire was giving them was not curing their destroyed world. The calm grass planted by the Imperials was not a restorative but a poison that infected the soil even more by preventing other plants from growing. Every effort expanded by the Empire on Honegar was aimed at keeping the Nagri enslaved. The Nagri were enraged and vowed revenge on Thrawn and the Empire that had maintained the deception for so long. Because Thrawn still trusted the Nagri, his own Nagri bodyguards were able to get close enough to slay him. Then having transferred their unwavering dedication to Leia to their Lady Vader, for her attempts to truly repair the Honegar environment, they undertook self-appointed service as her personal bodyguards, and as bodyguards for her children as they grew up. The Nagri's loyalty to Leia and her family is not unlike that of a Wookiee life debt. The Nagri would sooner die than see Leia come to harm. In fact, several have given their lives to protect her. Before destroying Thrawn, however, some Nagri decided to take their world's environmental woes into their own hands in an attempt to begin the rebuilding that the Empire had at one point promised. They discovered and cultivated what they named the future of the Nagri, a valley under a series of cliff walls near a river visible only from directly above. This place is a small agricultural oasis on a nearly dead world. 
Unfortunately, the planet may never fully recover. Despite the best efforts of Princess Leia and New Republic scientists, the devastation was simply too severe and too widespread. Meanwhile, with Leia's assistance, the Nogri have established the thriving colony of New Nystau on Wayland. Although the Nogri rarely venture out of their settlements alone, they have continued to increase their presence in the larger galaxy, going so far as to participate in missions against the Yusan Vong during the height of their invasion. And a notable appearance is obviously the Thrawn Trilogy. And probably the most famous individual is probably Rook. That is some uh, information about the Nagri and their homeworld of Honegger. Let me know what you uh, thought of this species in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, did you learn anything new? Right now you can watch some more uh, species videos on the left, on the top and on the bottom. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And until next time, thanks for watching.